Right, so I'm back to show off more maps. It's been 25 weeks since Fallout 4 was released, so that's about 6 months. Time truly does fly by. Also, the Far Harbor trailer has been released. It definitely gave me some Point Lookout vibes. Also some New Vegas vibes. From this one scene right here, and from the fact that there is a lever action rifle as well. The release date is May 19th, so that is something to look forward to. And yeah, that was about it for the Fallout 4 updates, but we're here for new mods. So let's get to this week's list. Coming in at number 5 this week, it's full complete automatically track quest dash locations dash magazines dash boblets. I said it before, but if your mod title name is really long, it's bound to be a good mod. So this mod adds in a little tool to your aid section that allows you to track just how much you squeezed out of Fallout 4. First of all, you can see your quest progression by faction or by location. So if I click on the minimum quest line, I can see that I've never completed old guns because that quest is bucked all hell for me. And I get to see that Preston is still very much unhappy that I never helped out with any settlement. Ever. Secondly, you can also see how many locations are left for you to discover and uh, what you still gotta clear out. Then you sort of accidentally become a jet addict because you misclicked. You can also see how many magazines are still left for you to read and where they are. The same for bobbleheads and audio tapes. This mod definitely makes it a lot easier for you to squeeze every last drop out of Fallout 4 without having to do the research yourself. Because let's be honest, using Google is way too much work. Yeah, it's a nifty little mod, definitely a nice tool for the completionist out there. It does seem to be a bit buggy for me though, at least I had to jiggle my way around to get to the bobblehead and hollow tape list. Now I have to spend some extra time to actually be able to get out of all of the menus, but other than that it worked just fine. So yeah, if you feel like you gotta tie up all your loose ends before Far Harbor's release, I suppose this is probably the mod for you. At number 4 we've got Spetsnaz Rifle Standalone Rifle. So this is a suppressed rifle based on the real life AS Vel and VSS Fin Torres. So in real life these things are like uh, submachine gun sniper rifles, which can fire full auto. Yeah, they're pretty weird guns, uh, definitely Russian engineering at its finest. In game this thing fires the 5mm round, it looks pretty good and it's pretty customizable. You can change the receivers, go for short, medium or long, or medium rare, deciding whether or not you want this thing to fire fully or semi-automatic. You can even go for explosive ammo. So yeah, it's cool, it's Russian, and it's tactical. You'd think it'd be enough to take out 25 Mama Murphys, but to my surprise, they were invulnerable. I was pretty sure I made all NPCs killable, but I guess I did not. So I just got the hell out of there as my convoy of Mama Murphy started slowly walking away in a single column, devouring the wasteland in their path with incoherent rambling. But yeah, to make ourselves fully tactical today, we're gonna go with SCGRU underscore 1.0. And this is a really descriptive mod name indeed. But this adds in the SCGRU armor pieces. It contains two balaclavas, two smirched chest rigs, and visors. You can go for the plain green visor or the red one. It does not come with the black outfit below it though. That is just a plain old Bredo to steel officer's uniform. But the combination is a pretty cool looking outfit. And I think it goes rather well with the Asphalt. If you're going for that sneaky special forces look. So a couple of weeks ago I showed off the iconic NCR Ranger veteran armor. But that thing comes with a long trench coat. Now there's some people on this planet that consider a long trench coat to be a bit creepy. A bit unsettling. Admittedly those things and fedoras as of late have gotten kind of a bad reputation. So if you don't want to be judged for your long trench coat, uh, but still want to look really cool, there now is Desert Ranger Combat Armor. Pretty much just as cool as Ranger Veteran Armor, but without the long trench coat. It looks really good, it looks a bit worn down, like uh, the guy that wore it has seen some real combat, reveled it up a tad bit. The helmet is made by the same guy, but it's a separate download. And this thing also looks really good, it's got a kill count on the right side and a jack of hearts on the left side. And it's also rather apologetic. See, so if your wardrobe is running a tad bit dry, this is definitely something to be taking a look at. At number 2 we've got Verti Drones, so this mod adds in Verti Drones. Small portable vertebrate drones. To craft one of these bad boys you gotta go to a chemistry station, they are under the utility section. There's four flavors, Scout, which has no weaponry, Laser, which has laser weaponry, Plasma, pretty self-explanatory, and then finally Nuke, which is the suicidal variant. So you can deploy one of them from the aid section, once deployed they will roam around you, and if they see enemies they will attack. Five of them can be up at the same time, and you can use the Vertidrone control program in the mist tab to firstly access the video feed, which is really just a glorified chase camera with a green tint. Secondly, you can call them back, and thirdly, you can tell them to self-destruct. Although they have the durability of a tin can, so I never really found much use in this feature. They pretty much do that themselves, like their bigger brothers. 
But yeah, it's a pretty cool little mod, it's not really that practical though. You'd probably be better off using your own two eyes. But if you want some variety, some tactical overwatch, this might just be the mod for you. At number one this week, we've got Rockin' Red Rocket. This mod adds a beautiful interior to Red Rocket. So you go there to check things out, but the door's locked. You have to walk a bit down the road to Concord, find his red pickup truck, casually undress the dead guy in the pickup bed, and take his key. Then you run back up the road, you say hello to Ringo, and then you finally get to enter the interior. Everything is already decorated for you, this mod requires none of that IKEA stuff I had to go through last week. But yeah, it's a beautiful interior, the lighting from the free windows really sets the mood. It's cozy and every inch is filled with really interesting stuff. It really looks like a hoarder's home, it's got a bench press, a crafting corner, a desk with a baba shelf above it. Some almost fresh instant mash, a beautiful kitchen, small armory tucked away in a barrel, a bed, a brother to steel figurine, a candlelit bathroom, and most importantly, a Mr. Pebbles poster. But yeah, I really like this mod. The best part is that you don't have to craft all this yourself, because I'd be way too lazy to do that. I mean, stacking all those cuppers, that would literally take forever. But in case you got sea legs, there's also my old tub, Boat Player Home. So as the name would indicate, this adds in a boat in which you can live. You need to go to the Gibson's Pier and find a boat close to the bridge. Then you hop on board, find a little hatch, and you realize again that it's locked. So you back up and you go to the diner down the road. You hop over the trap, watch out for the creepy monkey off on the right side. Then you lockpick the tiny safe on the left side. Inside you find a key to the boat. So you make your way back to the boat, wondering why everybody keeps locking every door. And then you finally get to go inside. There you will find a pretty good looking interior, it's not as tightly packed as Red Rocket and it is a bit more run down, but it does have working light switches which is pretty cool. Off on the left you've got a crafting section and a kitchen, off on the right you've got a living room area right next to a bathroom, then as you move along you've got a storage section with a power armor station and a bedroom. Whoever lived here was clearly an alcoholic judging by the amount of vodka bottles, especially the ones by the nightstand. Also for some reason there is a moon monkey doll in the bed, which is uh, pretty creepy. And to top it up, you've got a painting of a cat on a rocket. So this is also a very good looking player home, I do kind of prefer the red rocket one. It's a tad bit more atmospheric with the lighting. But it's good to know that you've got options on the real estate market in post-apocalyptic Boston. Well that was it for the top 5, but this week yet again we've got some bonus mods. We've got some Halo Majolnir Mark VI Armor CBBE. So this is Halo Armor exclusive to females. I guess because the mod author is a fan of big rounded shapes. It looks okay. The textures definitely could use a bit of work, and the glow on the visor is uh, a bit too much. But now that we've got some armor, we're gonna need a weapon, so we're gonna go with the Alien Assault Rifle. This adds in a fully customizable Alien Assault Rifle based off of the Alien Blaster, and gave mine a continuous beam, which is really loud. And to top it off, I also put on a jetpack. The Cross Jetpack. This jetpack mod allows you to wear a jetpack without power armor and you are able to customize it as well. You can change the color, add a boost jump or a sprint assist mode, or both. But you do have to remember that you still got fall damage because you're not wearing power armor. And once you figure that out, you've got the red tools to fight off an alien invasion. Fortunately, the aliens are still fighting a civil war, so it's pretty easy actually. So yeah, that was it for this week's mod. Some really good mods in there actually. They can only get better with the creation kit. I'm really waiting for some good voice quest mods, which I probably will be playing through in one of my gameplay videos, so you know, if you are interested in seeing that, you can click on one of those videos. It's really easy actually, you just like click with your mouse. Anyhow, until next time. See, I really found it peculiar how this lady is brushing the soil with a broom. Fucking brilliant Bethesda, my immersion could really not be higher right now. Like I'm so immersed in this game. I don't know what she's trying to achieve. Maybe I'm missing something here, I mean I'm not really that experienced when it comes to agriculture, so maybe it's just my ignorance. Maybe, although probably not. I'm gonna go with not here. Anyhow, I think that was about it. I don't really have a lot more to ramble on about. You know, usually I'm full of rambling at this point, but uh, today not so much. I mean, watch the uh, video in the bottom left corner. That's probably a pretty good video. I'm not quite sure which video is going to be there yet, because uh, that'll be future me who decides that, but uh, do watch that video though. It, it will be a top quality video. Still ever so slightly sick right now, but for the most part my voice is working fine. Still, you know, my nose is just a tad bit clogged up. So hopefully we're gonna get rid of that soon. But you know, I, I beat the cold, I beat the Brahmin, um, what did I call it? Mad Brahmin disease, that one. Yeah, I beat it. 
wait no that will probably be that video anyways it's all it will it all make sense soon basically yeah anyways truly until next time